I'm here with Dennis Meats of Total Fuel Solutions. And Dennis, the ethanol to boaters, ethanol in the gasoline to boaters into the outboard motors is a, is a big concern. Tell us, start off by telling us, Dennis, exactly what the ethanol is in our fuel and what it does to uh, our equipment. Okay, Bill, the uh, ethanol that's in our fuel is an additive that's been mandated by the federal government that's made from corn. It's basically pure alcohol. It's added to subsidize the oil, reduce our dependency on foreign oil, and other miscellaneous economic things. Mm -hmm. The problem with it is um, it absorbs water, it has no lubrication, and it really messes up two-stroke and four-stroke motors, especially small mo boat motors, lawn mowers, things like that. And what does, what does the ethanol do to these small motors, and in particular our outboard motors? Uh, the biggest thing it does is it lacks lubrication, okay, so it causes more wear on pumps and lines and everything. And the second thing it does is it burns extremely hot. And when it increases in temperature, it can cause failure to pistons and things like that um, in, in the engines. I've heard about the people that, I've heard about ethanol in our fuel tanks turn into water. Explain that to us. Actually, the term is phase separation, and the ethanol isn't really turning into water. What happens is, um, we'll use 100 gallons for a number, just because it's easy math. If you've got a 100 gallon tank, it takes 0.5% of that to go into phase separation. So that would be two quarts in a 100 gallon tank. Now that's not a lot of water in something about six times the size of your barbecue grill. Mm -hmm. So what happens is as soon as that tank gets two quarts of water in it, be it through condensation or poor delivery methods or any other way, the alcohol combines with the water and it sinks to the bottom of the tank. So if you had a true 100 gallons of E10, you'd have 10 and a half gallons of junk at the bottom of your tank. It won't burn and your motor won't run on it. And unfortunately, that's where the pickup is for all the fuel. You've got a demonstration to show that. All right, Bill, what, um, instead of just showing a phase separation demo, what I'd like to do is show you a demonstration that we do that also shows the volume of ethanol in the gas. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very simple little demonstration. What we've got, we've got 100 milliliters of fuel in this one container. And we've got 10 milliliters of water in this other container. Now we tinted the water red with food coloring just so you could see it, just make it visible through this you know, creamy colored vial. So what we're going to do is simply add our water to our fuel. And then we're going to just put this in a little jar just for something that we can agitate it with. And we'll shake it up real good, kind of like it would be going over the speed bumps on your motorcycle or wakes in your boat or whatever you want to do with it. And you'll see that it all turns nice and pink and it just gets in the uh, fuel. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pour this back into the beaker. And as we allow it to separate and filter down, we're going to see that we have approximately 18 milliliters of pink at the bottom, which is a combination of the ethanol, which has been pulled out of the fuel by the water, and the water. So this is very easy to do the math with this. It's 8% ethanol, or be E8, mm -hmm. not quite E10, with 10 milliliters of water. Now this would be at the bottom of your tank and it's unburnable. Your boat won't run on it. So it almost doubled the volume. We went from 10 milliliters to 18. Yes. And that's, that's right down where the fuel pickup is. Correct. So when it, when it pulls that up into your engine, you're done. Plugs the filters right off the bat, water separating filters, your little injector filters, everything. Plus, as it sets, it actually becomes an acid. 
when you mix um, ethanol with water, becomes a very weak acid, but it'll start eating lines and fittings and tanks and hoses and everything else. I know that, that I got caught with some of that and it ate the hoses up. The hoses that I had on my, on my, uh, in my fuel system, it just ate it up, Dennis, in the, in the little pieces and clogged everything I've got in the engine. We had to almost do a total rebuild yeah. of the engine because seems, of that. seems the biggest thing that it affects um, are the primer bulbs. Yeah. It's like the first thing that goes bad, you get to use the boat, you go to pump it up and the primer bulbs got a blown diaphragm in it. And then you might as well just go ahead and start replacing hoses because, you know, the, the effect has started.